Now we talk about a lot of different metrics within sports, such as heart rate, pace, calories, cadence, and so on. But one that always turns the heads is VO2 max. Yeah, now you've all likely heard the term VO2 max, and with advances in technology these days, it's becoming far easier and accessible to be able to measure it yourself. In fact, this very watch here apparently can tell me my VO2 number. Which is great, but Actually, what is VO2 max and why is it thought to be so important? But well, today with the help of the Sports Science Lab at the University of Bath and our channel partner Polar, we're going to be answering just that and one of us actually doing a VO2 max test. Now, before we flip a coin here, Mark, let's have a little bit of background about what a VO2 max is. Now, a person's VO2 max is also known as their maximal oxygen uptake and is a measurement of the maximum amount of oxygen that a person can utilize during intense exercise. Now, the measurements of this are milliliters of oxygen used in a minute per kilogram of body weight. Right, well, since oxygen is critical in fueling our muscles to perform, the higher your VO2 max, the better the fit you are in theory. And this means the higher you can get your VO2 max, the more oxygen your body can deliver to your muscles, enabling you to perform better or faster. And by knowing your VO2 max, we can then accurately create our training zones and train more smartly. So to give you a little bit of uh, perspective of what we're all aspiring to, Greg LeMond, the ex-pro cyclist, had a VO2 max of 92.5. Kylian Jorne, the epic ultra runner adventurer, has a VO2 max of 92. And it's said that Paula Radcliffe, the previous women's world marathon record holder, had a VO2 max of 75. Okay, well that's all very well, but to give a little bit of context here, it is said that the average person, male should I say, has a VO2 max of somewhere between 40 and 45 and the equivalent for a female is somewhere between 30 and 35. Yeah, and that being said, by having a high VO2 max doesn't necessarily mean that you will perform well and go and win races and beat those with a lower VO2 max. Actually, a lot more components are in play, such as your physiology, your psychology, but obviously having a VO2 max and being fitter is important, will help, but more crucially, knowing your own VO2 max, tracking that and seeing improvements in that is what we're after. So with all that, we, we should really look at how you find out your VO2 max. Yeah, and there are a couple ways that you can do this, but the first one that we're gonna concentrate on is by going into a sports lab and measuring it that way. Yeah, and it's time to flip the coin, Fraser. Heads or tails? I'll go tails. Ready? Oh, heads. Oh, it's a heads, and I'm guessing you don't wanna do it. Not really, mate, no. Right, okay, pull my socks up, get ready for a test. Right, so behind me, Fraser has just started his VO2 max test. I've done a number of these over the years, and I can tell you, they are not pleasant. So I'm very pleased I'm not on the treadmill today. You will notice though that Fraser's got a mask on his face. That's then connected to a rather fancy bit of kit here. This is a gas analyzing machine. This is measuring the volume of oxygen that he's inhaling and the amount of air that he is exhaling. And typically during a VO2 max test, an athlete will perform some form of ramp test where the intensity gradually increase until the athlete either fails and has to stop or their oxygen consumption plateaus. So yeah, like I said, this is a pretty tough test. What happens during the plateau, um, during the test, is basically the athlete goes from aerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism, meaning that they are no longer using oxygen to fuel the breakdown of carbohydrates, amino acids, fats, and so on, because there is simply no oxygen to do so. So yeah, we are doing this in a lab, which also means that we can take blood samples, which is really handy, so we can get lactate levels, and we're gonna get that all important VO2 max for Fraser. Good luck, Fraser. Off 
Fraser, valiant effort in there. That was uh, Yes, yeah, one impressive. way of putting it, Mark. I've only just stopped sweating now, about an hour down the road almost. I mean, um, yeah, it's only 11 minutes, or just under 11 minutes of running, but it was a tough 11 minutes, and that's the whole point. Uh, the numbers in particular were starting at 11 kilometres an hour, and then every minute increasing up about a kilometre an hour, so that got me to 20.5 kilometres an hour at my uh, failure point. And then the crucial numbers at that point were 198 as a max heart rate, which doesn't surprise me. It's I'm high. used to knowing, yeah, my heart rate always went quite high. And then the whole point of the test was the VO2, and now it comes in at 67.3. Which is also very good by most people's standards. Maybe not yourself, given what you used to have, but yeah, you're not seems, a pro anymore. No, I know I'm not. I forget that. It seems quite low, but um, either way, that's what it is now. And, and also, we were able to take bloods in there, so you got a peak lactate of 7.6, which no, again is... Was, good. Yeah, yeah, seems like a reasonable number for uh, working hard. So a yeah. lot of interesting stuff there, but what if I told you, Fraser, I also got my VO2 max whilst you were on the treadmill and I was just sat in a chair. Yeah, I'm not entirely happy about this. How, how did you do that? <laughs> well, on a number of devices out there, you can do a fitness test. So on our Polar Vantage V, they have mm -hmm. a fitness test function. Now, devices and brands differ. Some brands and devices require you to do a little bit of activity. This one in particular actually just needs you to take your resting heart rate, heart rate variability, and a few other metrics like your height, weight, etc. And it'll work out your VO2 max. So I did that, and I know what you're probably thinking out there. How on earth can that be accurate? Well, we're going to put this to the test here because I thought you've now got a very accurate VO2 max from the lab. Sure do, yeah. So here's a heart rate, and let's do the fitness test. Okay, well, it'll be interesting to compare. So I have just finished doing my VO2 max test on the watch here. And actually I'm surprised with the number that's given me. It has given me 69.0, which compared to my 67.3 from the very accurate lab test I've just done this morning is very, very close indeed. Yeah, I'm absolutely amazed by that. It's really impressive. Now, obviously this isn't quite as detailed as a no. lab test, but it gives you a really good ballpark figure and hopefully that changes as your fitness changes. Yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to everything, of course. And with the lab in particular, you know that it's gonna be in a very controlled environment. You're gonna have extremely accurate results, very detailed results as well. And you're also gonna get some more detail in there with things like the efficiency that you're running at, heart rate values obviously, and your lactates come out of there, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I guess though on the flip side, the downside of a lab test is, well, firstly, you need access to a lab, which for some people just isn't possible. Yeah. Although they are becoming increasingly more available, you then need to find availability within that lab mm -hmm. to be able to book in. That's gonna cost you, and it's hard work. Yeah, whereas with this fitness test on the watch, it's free to use once you've paid for the watch in the first place, and you can keep doing that whenever you want going forwards. It's also very easy and instantaneous information to get from the watch as well. Yes, yeah, so you just keep doing it over and over again. But then, as I mentioned already, obviously it's not as detailed and maybe as accurate as a fully fledged lab test, but it's open to anyone as and when they want to use it. Yeah, so I guess now, Mark, we have to decide what do we actually go and do with this VO2 max information? Well, go and compare with everyone else, obviously. Yeah, true. Actually, I was thinking maybe more in terms of what we could do with our training. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, obviously, from this, you then will be able to calculate your training zones. And theoretically, using a VO2 max is probably the most accurate way of calculating those training zones. So those percentages of your VO2 max for your training zones are on screen right now. So make sure you take a screenshot of that. And then the idea being that if you go ahead and train to those training zones, you really like bang on the money and should really see an improvement in your fitness and hopefully your performance. So that is what VO2 max is, how you can find out your VO2 max and what what you do with it. Now, if you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you give us a thumbs up and like for the video. If you don't already subscribe to GTM, make sure you click on the globe on screen right now and hit the bell icon to get notified when some of our videos come out. Yeah, now hopefully you have enjoyed this video because I put in quite a lot of effort to get you sure that did. number of dead. But if you want to see some other videos, then one that we have made recently is a swimmer versus a runner, and you can see that here. Yeah, and if you'd like to see how to run to heart rate zones, you can see that by clicking just down here.